something that you just been dying to say In 2016, I decided to publicly identify myself as a victim of Larry Nassar. Hello you guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Lindsay, and if you are not new here, thank you for coming back. And today's video is going to be the second video in the Survivor series. I actually have already filmed this once and edited it. It, but it ended up being 48 minutes long so I'm going to break it up into two so it's going to be episode two part one and then episode two part two first things first I just want to give a huge shout out to the girl who made my intro video I did not make that I'm not gonna take credit for it but she did an amazing job and I watched it probably 50 times and cried a lot watching it so I just wanted to give her a really big shout out she didn't want to be named but thank you so much for doing that you rock and it seriously means the world to me to have that made for me to put into my videos and I also just want to give a big thank you to everybody that watched my first video or messaged me about it anything along those lines it truly means the world to me and without you guys I wouldn't be able to film those videos so just thank you guys so much for giving me the support and encouraging me to do this because it's it would be really hard to do alone and you guys make it so it's not hard so thank you so much for that so the way I'm gonna break these two videos up is going to be the Part one is going to be about reporting my abuse and the part two is going to be about actually going public because I also realized in my video as I was making it, there's a difference between reporting your abuse and coming forward to the public. First time I filmed it, it was more so towards me going public, which not a lot of people do. So I think this is a good idea just to make one, the video shorter and two, to give more so advice towards reporting your story and your abuse and then if you want to go public and actually share it into the world. Some things that I want to say before I get into these videos are that one, everybody has to go on their own pace of, oh bless you, Cole just sneezed. Everybody has to go at their own pace of when they report their abuse and two, it's not a race Three, it doesn't make you weaker or less of a person if you haven't re reported your abuse. It doesn't make your abuse not real or any lesser than somebody else's if you haven't reported it. It's just something that you have to do on your own time and something that you have to feel comfortable doing that you know you aren't going to regret it once you do it because it is very hard information to tell somebody and even to just openly say it and use your voice and speak and say I was sexually abused for the first time is extremely hard and you have to be able to do it at your own pace because even though you may have been sexually abused, I was sexually abused, so and so was sexually abused, it doesn't mean that it doesn't affect people differently because everybody has different minds, different brains, different experiences, so you have to heal at your own pace and that is the only way that you are going to fully heal. If you are comparing your journey of healing to somebody else's, that's not fair to you because you're making it way hard on yourself and you're putting way more pressure on yourself, so don't do that. Heal at your own pace, don't compare, and while you are in the process of trying to come forward with your story, give yourself kindness and grace in that time and realize that it's okay if it takes you longer than other people because finding the courage to share your story is something that's very, very special and it should be unique to you. So don't compare your path of healing with somebody else's. I know I've had people say that to me and it's just not fair to yourself. So don't do that to yourself. It's okay if it takes you longer than somebody else. As long as you you find that voice and you you know that you have that courage that's what matters now I'm gonna go into kind of how I got into reporting my story there's a little bit of background information I'm gonna talk to you guys about so the way that I originally found out about Larry was at a meeting during practice if you didn't know I was on the Michigan State Gymnastics team and a few people from the athletic department came in and told us that we needed to meet in a classroom in Jenison Fieldhouse to talk about something so we go into this classroom, it's the entire team, it's the entire coaching staff and the entire training staff. And essentially the athletic department, the people who are there from the athletic department just tell us that there are allegations out against Larry Nassar for sexual abuse. And Kathy, who was the head coach of the Michigan State Gymnastics team at the time, my head coach, 
her immediate reaction was very unprofessional. She started sobbing, crying. She immediately said, I would trust my granddaughters with Larry. I would trust my daughters with Larry. And she was just screaming, this is bullshit. I mean, all of this stuff. So you could just tell she was very defensive of Larry. Now, in this time, the athletic department had said to us, if you are contacted by anybody, don't say anything about it. If they ask you to comment on it, just say you have no comment. The thing that got me the most about the meeting, which I wish I could go back and like confront somebody about it in the middle of it, was that nobody was even asked if they were a victim. There are people in the room that knew I had known Larry for a long time. I had been consistently seeing Larry for many, many years and not one, like no one even thought to ask, hey, are you a victim? Like could have, could this have happened to you? Not once did that come up. It was immediately if anybody contacts you about it, say no comment, essentially that. So I left the meeting feeling like if you say anything about it, you're going to get in trouble. Not only because of what they told us, but because of the way that Kathy responded. She was clearly highly defensive of Larry. I mean, she was sobbing. She was saying all these things. So your immediate reaction is just to, I mean, especially I was, what, 20 years old? Especially at that point is to just believe what people are telling you and like assume that they're right. But at the same time, you can't tell people to not talk about something like that. If the police call you and ask you about something, you should be able to give your honest answer. So these were just things that I like didn't realize at the time and I wish I would have. Taking into account that meeting, keep that in mind. A couple weeks later, maybe in a few days later, Kathy came into the gym with a card. So we all line up before practice, the entire team lines up and, hi buddy, and she has this card for us and she says, I have a card for Larry, it's like a sympathy card. If you guys want to sign it, you can. That'd be great to let him know we're thinking of him. So she literally is giving us a card to sign for somebody who was just accused of sexually assaulting athletes. Still, nobody has brought, nobody has asked, did this happen to you? Were you a victim of this? Nobody has, yet, nobody has asked that. And in this time, I'm like kind of starting to process, not that it fully clicked, but I am starting to process crap. I know he's doing that to me, but I think he was helping me, but what if he wasn't? It was just a very confusing time, and a couple days after the card, Larry, Kathy came up to me. This was during practice, and she said to me, your phone could be subject to search by police or investigators, so make sure you're not talking about the situation over text or anything. And I very vividly remember that because I was in a conversation, like a group chat, with a bunch of extra stars gymnasts, and we were talking about the fact that, or they were talking about the fact that, Larry did this to them and we were trying to make sense of it and I vividly remember responding back to them and saying hey guys I can't talk about this because my phone could be subject to search by police or investigators. There were just very prominent situations where Kathy was highly defending Larry and still had yet to ask me was I a victim of him? Did that happen to me? That I was never asked that. It was automatically just known that Larry did nothing wrong and don't speak of it. When the porn charges finally came out and I had the conversation with my parents, obviously I was nervous to tell Kathy because everything she had done going up to that point was in defense of Larry. So how am I now supposed to go and trust her with this information that I'm going to be reporting to the police, our team physician, that he was sexually assaulting me? Like that was a really hard position to be in. My mom had a conversation with her on the phone immediately after me, my dad, and my mom had the conversation where I finally just came to terms with the fact of what happened. And on the phone, she told my mom the same exact thing she did in the meeting. That she would trust her granddaughters with Larry. She would trust her daughter with Larry. And she also told my mom that somebody planted the porn in his garbage can. So going back to my first video, that is where the police found the porn in his garbage can in our neighborhood. So we live in like a fairly nice neighborhood a nice area we don't really have that kind of activity going on where somebody would go into our neighborhood and plant porn so the fact that she even said that was just unbelievable to me and appalling so once my mom told me that's how Kathy responded to her I'm like you gotta be kidding me so now I have to go in there tomorrow and talk to her about this and obviously she texted me and said Lindsay can I talk to you in my office and so I went into her office and I just told her, I said, we're going to go to the police and tell them that Larry abused me. I thought I was doing her a favor, you know, by saying, 
Larry was our team physician. I'm, I go to Michigan State. I'm on the gymnastics team, but I'm going to be reporting my abuse, like giving her a heads up almost. She told me that I needed to do my research because if I give the police false information about what he was doing to me, then I could hurt Larry's reputation. So like, I know that I was older when I finally understood what he was doing to me, but also I know when somebody's fingers are inside of me, I know what that feels like. I'm not stupid. I know what he was doing to me. So one, she tried to make me feel stupid and just say, make sure you do your research so you know what was happening to you. That just grinds my gears, one. Two, the fact that she said it could hurt Larry's reputation. This is why people don't report their abuse because the person that they tell either doesn't believe them and or defends the abuser, which is exactly what she did to me. I would hurt Larry's reputation. Okay, well, my world, my family's world was literally just flipped upside down by knowing that my doctor of 10 years was actually sexually assaulting me for his own pleasure instead of trying to help me heal so I could do gymnastics, which is what I love to do. But you're more concerned about that hurting his reputation. Got it. That was a crappy meeting. Supposedly, she reported the abuse. She never said anything to me about it. After I left the office, after I told her that we were going to the police, never heard a word from her about it again. Have no idea what she reported, what she said, who she said it to. I've got no idea. My parents and I went to an office where we reported my abuse to Detective Andrea Mumford. Andrea, if you're watching this, you are the absolute best. I love you. You rock. And I reported my abuse to her. I just, I told her exactly. I've been seeing Larry for this amount of years. I saw him this many times a week. I had this injury. This is how he would start his treatment. This is what he would do during the treatment. This is how we ended the treatment every single time. No, he didn't use gloves. No, there was no parental consent. Obviously, my parents had no idea. There was no billing of my insurance. I was underage, and he didn't tell me what he was doing. So there was just a lot of things that came of the conversation that really made me click about the fact that it was, the treatment was abuse. My reporting abuse side of the story is kind of crappy, just considering the fact that there were so many situations where Larry was being offended and I was made as the victim I guess I mean I am a victim of sexual assault but more so like the abuse was my fault or I was lying or it didn't really happen because one I was never asked if I was abused and two when I finally said out loud that I was I wasn't supported unfortunately that is something that we are trying to fight and we're trying to make better in this world is that when victims of abuse come forward that they're they are believed in that the abuser is not defended and statistics show that it's a little over 90% of allegations that are made are true against sexual assaults. So that leaves less than 10% that are actually false. And yet there are so many more people who automatically assume that somebody's lying about their assault. So that's just really frustrating. And I do believe we have made strides in that aspect of this where when people speak up about their abuse, they are taken seriously. And we have made a movement in that, but there is still a lot of work that needs to be done. So that is more, more or less my story about how I actually reported my abuse. I am in the second part of this video going to be talking about how I actually came forward with my story and shared it with the public, which I think is more so what you guys wanted to hear. But again, the video was 48 minutes long, so I, I, couldn't, I couldn't post that. There was no way. But I do still have questions I'm going to answer in this video. I'm just going to break the questions up for you guys between this video and part two. First question that I'm going to answer is, did it take time for you to admit it to yourself of what happened? Yes, it was very hard to understand what was happening to me. It was more or less my parents kind of knowing what had happened before me and just having me come to terms with it because I knew that he was doing that to me, but it, like I said in the first video, it was he was helping me, he wasn't abusing me. So it was very hard for me to come to terms with the fact that he was actually abusing me for his own pleasure and it wasn't just to help me. The next question is, from defending him to understanding what happened to everyone, when did it click and did anything make it click specifically? I defended Larry because of this trust that he instilled in me and because of the fact that my family and I were such good friends with him and just the grooming in general. But 
the porn charges is what actually made it click for me to realize that he was using me for his own pleasure and it wasn't just for treatment. So it was the day that the porn charges came out. The next question is, was it hard telling my family and friends what were some of the emotions you went through when you told your family and friends? It was very hard to tell my family because it was embarrassing, especially after the fact when my parents kept asking me, did he do this to you? Did he do this to you? And I kept saying no because I thought it was helping me, not hurting me. So it was very embarrassing to just say it out loud to your parents and also taking into consideration what that does to them. Obviously, as a kid, your parents want to protect you from everything. They want to help you. They want to see you succeed, reach your full potential, and they're willing to help you do anything to get there. And you think that you're protecting your kid from the guy at the grocery store that's staring at them or you're protecting them from having curfew so the weird people at night don't kidnap them, something like that. Those are the people that you try to look out for. But you never think to protect your kids from your family friends that know everything about you and your family and who have hung out with you and, you know, it just, you never think it's the people that you know and that you trust. So if there is any advice I can give in this video to parents if you're watching this, it's not always the people that you don't know more so times than not it's the people that you do know that you should be protecting your kids from and I'm not saying you shouldn't ever trust but just being extremely careful with who you're leaving your kids around and asking them questions of what this person does around your kid when they're alone things like that so be aware of the people who you do know also be aware of the people you don't know that's highly important but it's not just the people you don't know is what I'm saying it's also the people that you do know as well and as far as telling my friends, I didn't really tell my friends, and I guess I I owe them an apology, but it was so hard for me to understand at first, and I went into the public world with my story very quickly after I told my family, so I didn't really have a lot of time to sit my friends down and tell them, not to mention my three best friends don't live by me. One was in Grand Rapids, one was in Indiana, and one was in Nebraska. So I think that they more so just found out from the media when my article came out which was crappy of me, but at the time I really didn't understand how big this was going to be. And with that being said, my friends have been the most supportive people in my life, aside from my family, Grace, Mal, and Allie. I owe the world to them. They have backed me up. They have been there to vent, to just talk about things, to take my mind off of it, FaceTimes, phone calls, anything. So those were the three friends that I really felt like going back in time, I wish I would have sat them down to tell them but it just didn't work out like that at the time. The next question is, what gave you the courage to first say anything, anything at all? The number one reason was speaking up for other girls who I knew had been abused. I knew that Larry had seen hundreds of girls and if not thousands, and I knew I wasn't gonna be the only one. And so it was very important for me to be, to first make that police report because I knew that I wanted to go public with my story. I just didn't know when, but making that police report for me was the first step in my process of going public with my story. So that was the one of the reasons why I wanted to report it to accountability because what Larry did to me was wrong and he needs to be held accountable for that and held responsible for his wrongdoing. Being a voice for other people, taking that step to report, and also just accountability. Have your parents been supportive of you from the beginning? Yes, very supportive in every aspect, in every way. I am so, so, so thankful for everything that my parents have done for me in this process. I mean, giving up sleep, giving up work, missing out on money from working, giving me their meals when I'm busy doing interviews and press conferences, traveling with me, everything. My parents have, through thick and thin, been there for me and have never once made me feel like a victim of this situation and they've always been there to help me heal in my process and I couldn't be more thankful for my parents. I love them so much and you think you know what your parents do for you and how they help you as you grow up but I truly feel like this past year is what actually made me realize that. So big shout out to my parents. They are, I'm so blessed and I'm so thankful for them. The next question is, what was the hardest part about coming forward? And again, being on the Michigan State Gymnastics team because you're a part of the Michigan State community and obviously Larry was the MSU doctor for many sports. Kathy was my coach who had been at Michigan State for 26 and a half years. And 
also just the fact that there were people who I defended Larry to in the very beginning, and now I'm going to come forward and say that he sexually assaulted me because you finally understand. So that was very hard as well. So just knowing that I was going to take backlash from the MSU community, roping in Kathy with that conversation, those two just kind of go together, and then what people were going to think of me. So for those of you who ask questions about fear, I'm going to be answering those in the part two of this video, which is going to be, again, the coming forward publicly with my story. So I have three questions on fear that I'm going to be talking about. All right, you guys, that is going to complete this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't so you can stay tuned for the videos that are coming up. And part two of this will be coming very soon. So be on the lookout for that. And I hope you guys are having a great day or a great night whenever you're watching this. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.